Yesterday about what is electric chemical cell, we said we start with chemicals and we're going to make electricity. And we looked at all the different parts in this electrochemical cell and I told you today we're going to look at how does this cell function. Okay, so now this cell, I just want to get to my notes. Um, this cell functions due to different strength of um, oxidizing and reducing agents. Okay, now I said yesterday I'm going to come back to this in a moment. I first want to go to the first example. Okay, so the first example there is the copper zinc cell. So that is the example that I have here in front, the physical example. Again, my salt bridge is in my dreams. I don't have it. Okay, so I'm just going to put this out here again. So in the line, we have these two containers. Just want to make it the right way around. So we have two containers, and in the one we put the copper sulfate liquid, the bluish liquid, and the other one we put the zinc sulfate liquid. It's a colorless liquid. There at the bottom is just the, it's almost like a rust. Okay, and then you put the two electrodes in. You have the zinc electrode made out of zinc, it goes with this one, and you have the copper electrode made out of copper. Okay, and then we will have a, so attached to these things normally, we have a conductor, so at the top with a light bulb or a meter, and then in here we have a glass tube almost, that we call the salt bridge. Okay, so there they, uh, there's a picture, and you can see the bluish liquid, the colorless liquid. Now, I want you, next to this page, have open table 4B. So next to this page, must please have open table 4B. Okay, and while you are on table 4B, oh sorry, I want you to look at where we have zinc and where we have copper. Now, if you zoom in, zinc is more or less there to the top. You have zinc there. And then if you look for copper, you'll see that we have three coppers. Okay? The three coppers that we have is, I uh, just want to get my eye on there. You have copper plus one, copper and copper. There's the three. Okay? So I want you to highlight definitely zinc. There's only one zinc. But then with the coppers, we have a copper 2 plus to a copper 1 plus. We have a copper 2 plus to a copper 0 valency or 0 oxidation number. And then we have, don't highlight all the coppers. And then we have copper plus 1. Don't worry, I have extra pages. Copper plus 1 to copper 0. Okay, so now the question is which one to use? Now, Almost never you will we use the copper 2 plus to copper 1 plus. Okay, this is an exception. Then they have to tell you, you use, and they'll say copper, and then Roman number 2, blah, 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 copper, Roman number 1, to show plus 2 to plus 1. But we hardly ever use that one. Then we, we have to choose, do we use 2 plus, or do we use 1 plus? Now, 90% of the time, we use the 2 plus. They must, must state when we use the plus one. Because copper's valency is normally the two plus. Okay. So careful which one you highlight. But 90% of the time it's copper two plus. Okay. So now we have the substances that we use. Now we want to figure out our Z. We want to figure out how will it react. Which reaction will be the oxidation half reaction. And which one will be the reduction half reaction. Okay, now our Z must look like this, right? So that is what a Z looks like. It's fine. Okay, so that means if I look at these two things here, then my Z must look like that. Okay, so I can draw a line like that. And I want to tell myself that in, for the zinc half reaction, we're going to go from zinc that direction. Sorry. That direction and for the copper half reaction we're going to go from there into that direction okay so without even looking at the rest of the picture I can from there see which one is my oxidation half reaction which one is my reduction half reaction so I'm just going to go over this again what did I do I went to find my two elements that I work with I highlighted the whole line 
Then I said, right, I mustn't be able to make a Z. So I drew my Z like that. And I said, okay, that means that the zinc must go in that direction and the copper must go in that direction. Okay, any questions there? Ma'am, can you please explain again? I don't know what's happening here. Okay, the top reaction. What did we say is the top reaction? Oxidation or reduction? Oxidation, always oxidation. So this will be my oxidation half reaction. This is my reduction half reaction. Okay, now we go back to that page that example. So now we know, we've discussed that zinc is there at the top. So zinc will be my oxidation half reaction. And copper is at the bottom. It will be my reduction half reaction. Okay, then what happens at the oxidation half reaction? The definition for an oxidation reaction is oxidation is loss of electrons. So what does that mean? It means when we are here with the zinc electrode, it will lose electrons. It will give off electrons. So here we have electrons and it's going to give off those electrons. So the electrons will be given off. It will move through the external circuit. So what we have left here is we have the zinc ions. Right, because it lost electrons. So we're left with a positive thing. And that positive thing will go into the solution to make zinc ions. So what you will see at the anode or at the zinc electrode is you will see that it corrodes away. It is eaten away. It is like a rust. It just, it almost looks like it dissolves. We say it corrodes away, it's eaten away. Okay, why does it eat away? Because it's the oxidation half reaction. What does it mean? It means it gives off electrons. So the positive things that are left behind goes into the solution. Okay, right, that's the oxidation half reaction. And then the electrons move, do, 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 do. Because they move, you'll see a reading on the voltmeter there. They'll move. And they will be attracted to the cathode. Why will they be attracted? Because the cathode is the positive one. Okay. How is it the positive one? Well, the electrons now, they go and they go sit here. And in the solution, this copper sulfate solution, aqueous. Okay. That aqueous means actually that we have copper ions and sulfate ions, okay? So because this gives away electrons and the electrons go sit here, the electrons here will attract the copper ions. Positive and negative attract, so the copper will form a precipitate there. You will form a copper layer. So that there is a copper layer that forms or a copper precipitate that forms on there. Okay, this here is corrode. Ooh, I think there's an I cor 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 corrode. I don't know. Corrodes away. Or is eaten away. Okay. So I'm just going to recap again what has happened. Okay, so we have the anode where oxidation takes place spontaneously. What does that mean? It gives off electrons. Okay, so a positive is left behind. So the positive goes into solution and the electrons go over, over, over and they go sit here. What happens there is the electrons attract the copper in the solution and the copper forms a precipitate around this electrode. So it will sit on then will form a bigger and bigger and bigger electrode okay so after a while you have a lot of zinc ions in the solution and you have a lot of sulfate ions in the solution because all the copper ions went to sit there so you only have left the sulfate ions and here you have zinc ions and what do we know about positive and negative they attract so they will meet each other in the salt bridge there and that completes the reaction and you will have a circuit. Okay, right. So let's fill in here at the bottom. It says, or let's first read, it says, Zinc is a stronger reducing agent than copper. 
Okay, now this is something that you must know. That sentence is something that you must know. Now, ma'am, how do I know that the zinc is a stronger reducing agent than copper? If you look on table 4B, it says there, um, ooh, I'm sorry, I think I have the Afrikaans one, but yours, is yours in Afrikaans or English? Afrikaans. Okay, sorry, it means toenemende oxiderende vermoe beteken increasing oxidizing um, ability. Okay, and that is down. And on the right hand side, it is increasing reducing ability. And that goes up. Okay. So what does that mean? That just means that when you go up in this table, then your reducing agent's ability increases. Meaning, if we have the oxidation half reaction there, then that is our reducing agent. Right? So if you look at zinc and copper... Because zinc is higher up, it is a stronger reducing agent, meaning oxidation will take place. Because zinc ach, copper is lower, it is a weaker reducing agent. It's not a good reducing agent. So there we will actually have reduction that rather takes place, not oxidation. Okay, so that is how we got to that sentence. Zinc is a stronger reducing agent than copper. How did we see that? We looked at table 4B. And because it's a stronger reducing agent, oxidation will take place. So it's oxidized at the anode. How do we remember that oxidation takes place at the anode? Vowel, vowel. Or how you remember that is anode negative oxidation. Anode negative oxidation. Okay, so if it is oxidized, it means it gives away electrons, gives away electrons, or it loses electrons. Oxidation is loss, and that is why it goes into solution as zinc ions, because it gave away its electrons, so it goes into solution as zinc ions. So the electrons that are left behind, these electrons that are left behind there, um, on the negative anode flows through the external circuit to the positive cathode. So they go all the way to the positive cathode. Loses electrons. There. Gives away electrons or loses electrons. Okay. So what happens at the cathode? At the cathode, so now the electrons all sit there. The uh, copper ions in solution are reduced. What it, does reduction mean or reduce? It means it gains electrons. If it is reduced, then it means it gains electrons. So reduce, it gains electrons. And precipitate. Precipitate means it forms a layer. A layer. It forms a precipitate on the cathode as copper. So you'll form a copper layer, layer, layer. And then the zinc ions and the sulfate ions move through the salt bridge, completing the circuit. Okay, good question. So, ma'am, the salt bridge, what in the hell? Salt bridge is a glass tube. I don't have an example, but it's a glass tube. It looks like a test tube. But it's bent like this. Okay? So half of it goes in there and there. So it goes like that. And then in there we have glass wool. It looks like cotton wool, but it's made out of glass. Thin glass wires. Okay, so it's very dangerous. We normally don't have it in glass. So glass wool. Um, and then we put in there a salty solution. Now, why do we put in a salty solution? Because salts are good conductors of electricity, good conductors of ions. So we call it a salt bridge so that the salt in there, it doesn't matter which salt, but the salt in there helps the zinc and the sulfate to come together and to bond. 
okay? So the salt bridge is almost like a catalyst or almost like, um, what do you call that, Dave, thing up again? Tinder or something like that. So uh, it's a help for the two chemicals to come together. Okay, now this here normally must be aqueous solution, must be dissolved in water. Hello, ma'am. He's fine. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Um, I don't have any idea what it is. I don't have any number for me. Does anyone have his number? Excuse me. I want to bring it to the Okay, I'm going to go to the Good. So. If they give you the chemical that must be in the salt bridge, that's fine. If they don't give it to you, they, and they ask you what solution will be suitable for the salt bridge, then you choose, sorry, potassium nitrate aqueous. The potassium nitrate solution, because that will always be soluble. So that is always soluble, meaning it will always help. It won't form a precipitate. It won't form... Um, Clots. Thank you very much. Okay. Say again. Yeah. 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 The this plate is eaten away. The zinc. So you'll see the zinc plate after a while. So this is a new one. But after a while, it becomes smaller and thinner and thinner. Yeah. Okay, right. So now we must write down the half reactions. Okay, so you can see there we must write the oxidation half reaction, then reduction half reaction, then the net cell reaction, then the net cell, uh, the cell notation. Now, you must be able to explain that. Not all of it, they'll ask parts of it, especially the first bullet point, they love to ask that. So that is what you must know. But you must also be able to write these reactions. Okay. So the first half reaction that we must write is the oxidation half reaction. Now we are going to then look at table 4B. So okay. I highlighted the two things. We see that the zinc is the oxidation half reaction. Then you're going to write this reaction in reverse. You're going to start with the zinc. And then you're going to go to zinc 2+. plus. Okay, so you're going to write it in reverse. That's why you have table 4B to help you. So we start with a zinc, and the zinc was the metal we start with. If it's on its own, if it doesn't have a valency, then it's a solid. Then it goes into, so if you read it in reverse, then you see it goes to zinc 2+. plus. Now anything that has a plus or a minus there at the top is aqueous. It's in solution. And it actually gave away two electrons. Then we're going to write down the reduction half reaction. Again, we highlighted that on our table. You see there the copper half reaction. We wrote that we started with copper 2 plus. Remember something has a plus or a minus. It is aqueous. Then it gained two electrons. And it formed a precipitate copper solid that precipitate okay so that is the two half reactions or the oxidation half reaction or the reduction half reaction you must be able to give that okay so you basically just going to rewrite it from your table then you must write the net cell reaction that is where you add the oxidation and the reduction half reactions together so they'll also or, um, either speak about the net cell reaction or the redox reaction. The redox reaction or the net cell reaction is where you add them together. So you're basically, like in mathematics, you have two equations, these two, and you're going to add them together. Okay, now when you add two equations together, you check, is there something that can cancel out on both sides, right? And in this one, you see there's my arrow, there's my arrow. On the left-hand side, I have all of that. On the right hand side, I have all of that. Is there something that can cancel out? What? The electrons can cancel out. So we can say, now when you cancel this out in an exam, use a pencil. Okay? Otherwise, it means you scratched out something. So you say, right, that and that cancels out. But you don't have to show that it cancels out. You don't have to. And then we say, on the left hand side, we have zinc solid. And we have copper ion. And that formed a zinc ion and copper 
solid. Okay, now we're going to do the cell notation. That is like the name of the cell. Okay, explaining what... So if I just... If this was not labeled at all, nothing was labeled, and you give me the name of the cell, then I'll be able to figure out what elements in chemicals you like. Okay, so the cell notation is like the name of the cell. Now I quickly want to go back to this page then. For the cell notation, we have two types of notations. We have when we have active electrodes, meaning the electrodes that take part, like zinc in zinc, copper in copper. These are active electrodes that take part. Then it looks like the following. You write the substance that is at the anode. Then you make a straight line down like this. Then the oxidized substance. So the thing... At the anode and then the thing that was oxidized. Then you have two lines. The two lines represent the salt bridge. Then you have the reduced substance line and then the cathode. Like for example there, we haven't done this example yet, but say you had copper and then it was oxidized to copper 2 plus. Then you had a silver and then it was reduced to silver. Can you see that? So it's not too difficult. Okay, then another type of a cell notation that we have is when we use inert electrodes, meaning electrodes that do not take part in the reaction. They are just there to assist, like example, the carbon electrodes, platinum electrodes. Then they will look as follow. Then you'll write the platinum and then anode oxidized, reduced cathode and then platinum. So you just add something that didn't take part of it at the end. Okay, but I'll, we'll do an example like that a bit later on. Okay, so let's quickly look here. We have to do the cell notation. With the cell notation, you start with the thing that was at the anode. What electrode was the anode? The zinc or the copper? The zinc. So you write the zinc. I just want to make sure of something. Yeah, first subscripts. Zinc, solid. And zinc went to zinc 2 plus aqueous. So zinc that was oxidized went to zinc 2 plus. Then you have two lines representing the salt bridge. And then at the cathode, you started with the copper ion. You started with the copper ion aqueous. And it was reduced to copper solid. So you're basically just writing down the important parts from zinc to zinc 2 plus. From copper 2 plus to copper. Okay, right. Next one. Now I give you less information. Okay, so next example. What's wrong? Okay, so here we have also an electrochemical cell or a galvanic cell. How do you know it's a galvanic cell? Because there's a salt bridge. Okay, what type of energy conversion takes place? You start with chemicals and it gives you electricity at the end. Okay, it is an exothermic reaction, it is a spontaneous reaction. Now you see, they say you start with copper and silver. So you go to table 4B. Okay, table 4B. Okay, and you go and you highlight, you can choose a new... Um, a new table if you want to or different color highlighter on the same table it doesn't matter so you go there we say right we need silver now silver is down down there we have silver and then copper and again i told you we're going to use copper two plus so we have the copper two plus okay so i highlighted those two things then for myself, I say, okay, it must make a Z. So I think there it will look like that. Meaning this arrow must point that direction. This arrow must point that direction. Okay, remember, you're only going to get one question on this in the exam. Okay, multiple choice question and another question. So don't be scared to highlight. Okay, and to use this page. So this just means that copper... Is the one that will be oxidized so this is my oxidation of reaction and silver is the one that will be reduced that will gain an electron so 
Oxidation is where it loses electrons. Reduction is where it gains electrons. So copper will be, is it my oxidizing agent or my reducing agent? Copper. Reducing agent. If it is oxidized, then it's my reducing agent. If it is reduced, then it is my oxidizing agent. Okay, right. So, I have there then that my copper, because it's my um, the reaction that undergoes oxidation, it means it will give off electrons and this copper will go into the solution as copper ions. Okay? This solution must be a solution of the same element. Okay? And I'm going to choose for it to be copper nitrate. Okay, now ma'am, why do you choose copper nitrate? Why not copper sulfate? Because nitrates are always, always soluble. Sulfates are not. So I'm scared because if it was barium sulfate, it will have formed a precipitate. Okay, so if I have a choice in what solution, it's always a nitrate. Always, always. So that just means in here, I have copper ions and I have nitrate ions. Sorry, nitrate ions. Copper and nitrate ions. Okay. So, it gave away electrons and due to that, it, have, uh, it will uh, oxidize and will form copper ions in the solution. So, you will see, what will you visibly see? That this is corroded away. It's eaten away. Then the electrons will move all the way up here. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And in here you can have a voltmeter or an ammeter or you can have a light bulb to show that we have a current. And the electrons will go sit here. And that will attract the silver ions in the solution. So in this solution we will have, or if it's a silver electrode, the solution must be silver Sorry, silver nitrate. Okay, so it means in here we have silver ions and in here we have nitrate ions. Okay, so this silver here will be attracted to these electrons. So the silver will be attracted to the electrons and it will form a silver precipitate around the electrode. So it will form like a silver layer around it or the silver will become bigger and bigger. Okay, then we will have excess nitrate ions in the solution and we have, will have all the copper in the solution and they will meet each other in the salt bridge. Okay, in the salt bridge, what solution will we put in there? Can, okay, NO3 or potassium nitrate, yes. Why? Because it is always soluble. Now, next question. The copper electrode, the copper electrode, is it the anode or the cathode? Why is it the anode? Because it is? Where it loses electrons, it is where oxidation takes place. Is it positive or negative? Negative. Anode, anode, negative oxidation. So the other one, the silver electrode, is the cathode. It is where reduction takes place, and therefore it is positive. Okay, now a trick question for a chewing gum. What will you visibly see happening to the electrolyte, the solution, the electrolyte here at the copper side? What will you visibly see? Oh, I'm promising two gums, but I don't know where it is. What will you visibly see happening at, with the electrolyte there at the copper What will you visibly see or experience? Anyone? So I'm keeping my non-existing. Yeah, sorry, I'm making promises I can't keep. Okay, you will visibly see that it becomes darker or more blue. 
Why? Because more copper ions goes into solution. So the copper part makes it blue, so you'll see it becomes bluer and bluer and bluer. With the previous one, oopsie, what would you have seen here at the um, copper solution? This copper, each time this copper went to sit on there to form a layer. So the copper is taking, taken out of the solution, forms a layer. So you'll see there that the solution becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. Okay. Right, now let's write some explanation there. We say copper is a stronger what than silver? Because it's higher up, stronger? Reducing agent than silver. And therefore it is oxidized at the anode. No, reducing agent. Then silver and is oxidized at the anode, yes. Okay, right, and it goes into solution as copper 2 plus ions. The electrons left behind on the negative anode flows through the external circuit, makes the light bulb shine, to the positive cathode. At the cathode, the silver ions are reduced. They gain, reduced means they gain electrons and precipitate, it means it forms a layer on the cathode as silver solid. So it forms a silver layer. And then what goes and meets in the salt breach? We have left the copper ions and the nitrate ions. Moves through the salt breach where they meet. Okay, so our half reactions that we must write down. You have your table 4B next to you. We had at the top, we had the copper half reaction, right? That's the oxidation half reaction. So we have copper solid. Remember you read it from right to left, like your arrow that you drew from right to left. <coughs> copper goes into copper 2 plus aqueous and two electrons. Your reduction half reaction, you started with your silver ion, aqueous, make sure you agree with me on your table 4B, your, sil your silver you read from left to right. Look at your arrow, your arrow goes in that direction, so from that side to that side. Okay, so, and then it gains an electron and it forms your silver solid. Right. Now I want to add them together. Are they balanced in terms of electrons? No. Okay. So before I can add them together, I, make, I must make sure the electrons cancel out. Okay. So I'm going to multiply this whole second one with two. Okay. So I'll have two of that, two of that, and two of that. Now the electrons do cancel out, and now I can add them together. What's wrong, Karabu? Sure. Okay. Now I have a bonus question. Which one of the two um, half cells, meaning the copper or the silver, will be depleted first, will be finished first, will be used up first? Which one will be the limiting reagent? Which one will cause the cell to stop working? The silver, why the silver? Say again. Yes, the valency, but 
you can even make it easier than that because for every one copper you need two silver ions so your silver will be finished first okay right then we must write our cell notation how do we do that again cell notation you start with the anode so with the copper then that is oxidized to copper two plus ion always start with the anode then we have our salt bridge and then the other half cell is we have the silver ion aqueous and that went to silver solid now ma'am isn't it necessary to write the two no it's not necessary or you actually should not do it not necessary don't do it okay that's fine you have it now if we are making batteries we want to know what volts this battery will be that we are making. Are we making a 3 volts battery, a 9 volts battery, a 1.5 volts battery? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. There's two copies, ma'am. Why did we choose the one that... Uh, you 99.999% of the time you choose the one that goes from um, 2 plus to nothing. Okay, so I'm just, this thing is not charging, and then, um, okay, right, so the next page here, yeah, I'm going to go through this quite quickly, so we want to determine the volts, and the volts is relative, it's like when we have the electro, um, electronegativity, we say fluorine is 4, how did we get to fluorine to be 4? They just said fluorine is four, and all of the rest is comparative to that. The same here with the half cells. Okay, right. Now I'm going to read, and then we're going to get to how did they get to the values. All metals, when they are placed in water, have a tendency to go into solution as the, as the ions. That just means if I put a piece of metal inside water, it will start to deteriorate. Some will quickly rust. Or dissolve and others will take years before it dissolve so the tendency to dissolve is, is a different for each metal okay but when it goes into solution it will leave electrons um, on this piece of metal okay then it says soon there are enough ions there's enough ions in the solution and electrons on the metal so that they will pull each other or they will attract each other. And we say then a potential result. So there's a potential to attract one another. Okay? Then this potential is sometimes strong enough to pull some of the ions out of the solution again. And a dynamic equilibrium is set up. Okay, so if we look at this example, I'm just going to draw a picture here. So if we have a container there with a piece of metal, then, and this is water, right? Let's say this is, let's make it easy peasy, silver. Okay, then this silver will dissolve into silver ions, okay, leaving electrons behind. So the rod becomes more negative and neg negatively charged and the water becomes positive and positive and positive. Positive and negative attract. And how strong they attract one another is the potential, the volts, the ability to attract one another. Okay, so that is what is explained here. So any metal will go into solution as an ion and leave electrons behind and then we can go back to the metal because they can attract one another again. Now, the size of the potential, the size of this ability to track one another, it depends on three things. Okay? It depends on one, the metal strength, sorry, the metal strength as a reducing agent. How easy or difficult can this metal give away electrons? If it can give away electrons easy, easy, then it is a strong reducing agent. Okay, the stronger the reducing agent, the greater the tendency to ionize, the greater the tendency to dissolve. 
Okay, now this is what is shown or illustrated or given in table 4B. If you look at table 4B, and then you can see we go up, 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 and lithium is all, uh, they're all there. They're way at the top, so lithium is the strongest reducing agent. If it was between lithium and anything else, it will, lithium will dissolve first. Okay, right. Then it has to do with the concentration of the metal ions in the solution. Okay, so obviously, I'm just going to back here. If we have a lot of silver ions in there, then they would repel one another. They'll get saturated and they'll want to um, ionize again, uh, um, uh, reduce again, go sit on there again. Okay, if there's not a lot of ions in the solution, then it will not be very positive, so it will not be attracted to that thing. Okay, then the next one is the temperature of the water. We all know if you have warmer water, it dissolves, something dissolves faster, easier. So the higher the temperature, the greater the tendency for metal to ionize. So there's three variables obviously in science we want to compare things we want to make an experiment we can't have three variables so we need to keep two constant and the two that we uh, the two we keep constant is three and two we say we're going to keep the concentration constant and the temperature constant always for this entire chapter okay so it says there the standard half cell, standard because we have kept something constant now so we can draw a standard conclusion. The standard half cell consists of a metal electrode with a one concentration solution. They make that concentration that we keep constant, they make it easy, they say the concentration is one. And they say we are at 25 degrees Celsius. So for everything here in table 4B, the concentration is one, and the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius for all of them. Okay, right. This potential, the potential of this half cell is called the standard electrode potential. The standard electrode potential. That's the name of this standard values that we have. And the symbol is an E with a little line thing imaging there at the top. Okay, so you can see there. At um, table 4B, there on the right-hand side, there you have the standard electrode potential, that E, on the right-hand side. That is the volts that they can give if they're in solution of one mole per decimeter cube and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if we meet those two standard conditions, then we can use these values. Okay, now these values were difficult to get to. They say that because it is difficult to measure the standard electrode potential, now in your head you can read that just as the volts. Because it's difficult to get to the volts potential from a cell combination, a standard reference, a standard reference was developed. Okay, we must meet everything. Like we meet everything with fluorine, here we meet everything or we measure everything with the hydrogen electrode. Okay, now why do they measure everything with a hydrogen electrode? If you look at table 4B, the hydrogen is in the middle, it is bold. And look at the volts of hydrogen there on the right hand side, the volts is zero. So if I have hydrogen on the one side and silver on the other side, and I get a voltmeter reading, then I know that voltmeter reading belongs to silver. Because hydrogen has a zero volts. Okay, so that is how they got all of these values. They compared everything with hydrogen. The hydrogen half cell. Okay, now in this hydrogen half cell, the following you must know. You must know that we used a platinum electrode. Remember yesterday I told you, if you hear platinum, what must you think of? Hydrogen. Okay, so they used a platinum electrode. The solution was an acid solution with a concentration of one. They were 25 degrees Celsius, so that's what you must know. And you must know the volts were given as zero. And I just quickly want to explain. So what they do there is here they have this test tube, but it's a funky looking test tube. It's like a, okay, so it's an open test tube with a, a pipe there. 
okay? And in there, they have this small thin wire with a platinum foil there at the bottom, okay? And then what they do is they put this test tube inside a container that has sulfuric acid in it. The acid solution, they put it inside um, sulfuric acid solution. Okay, then what they do is they pump in hydrogen gas in there. So they pump in all this hydrogen gas, the hydrogen gas goes down here, and then around this um, uh, platinum electrode, there is where the reaction takes place. There is where you go from, so the hydrogen is being pumped in, okay, there, and then the hydrogen, um, due to the platinum, so the platinum is where it attaches, where it connects, where it helps, with the help of the acid solution, the hydrogen goes to hydrogen ion, to an acid solution, so it dissolves in the acidic solution. Actually gives two. Okay. You won't need to be able to explain it so fully. Okay, so only thing you need to know is they pump in hydrogen in there and then it goes into solution here. Hydrogen ion. Okay? So if we need to write the cell notation, we want to say, okay, it goes from hydrogen gas, it goes to two hydrogen ions. Or you don't actually have to show the two. You can just say hydrogen ion. Aqueous. But because hydrogen is not a solid. It's not something. It's not an electrode. I can't put in a hydrogen piece of metal there. I mean, you, you don't find an electrode made of hydrogen because it's a gas. You need platinum to assist. So platinum is the inert electrode, the unreactive electrode, and you need to show. In this example, we used platinum. And how you show that is, there where you add hydrogen, you say, we used platinum to assist in this pro process. So platinum is the anode, and then it went from hydrogen to hydrogen. Okay, and then this is the half cell, this is the half, sorry, the half cell notation. So if it was a full cell notation, then you'll have your salt bridge and whatever goes on there next. Okay. Right, so that is just with the help of the half, hydrogen half cell, they determine the volt of all the rest. Okay, so let's calculate the volt of all the rest. But before they, we do that, we're going to do the following two things. We are going to determine the EMF, so the volts. What is the EMF again? The electrometoric force, the maximum volts that we can determine. Or we can get. Of each cell. And we're going to predict whether a reaction will take place or not. Because not all of these redox reactions take place. You can put up a cell, put in your chemicals and your things, and then nothing happens. Because you chose the wrong chemicals. Okay, so we're going to look at how does that happen. Now, if you want to determine the EMF of an electrochemical cell, there's a formula for that on your data sheet. So, do you have a data sheet here for chemistry? Yes, no. Okay, but on your data sheet, if you have one here, then you'll see these formulas there that calculate the electrochemical um, cell volts. Okay, so it's going to show here. So here you have your, um, all your constants, then you have a few mole equations, and then here at the bottom you have the formula. Now there are three formulas. I only put it in two there, but there's actually three formulas. Now, you can use any one of the three formulas that works for you, but you must write the entire subscript out when you use them. So, you can't just write E, sorry, you can't just write E minus E. You must write E, oxidizing agent, not OA, oxidizing agent minus E, reducing agent. So, when you choose your formula, choose wisely so that you have less to write. Okay. 
So let's use these equations. They say that calculate the EMF, the volts, of a cell in which the following spontaneous reactions, it means it does take place, occurs under standard conditions. Um, Rita Bile, what is these standard conditions again? There's two conditions on the previous page. Sorry? Say again. Yes? What's the two standard conditions? What must the concentration be? What must the temperature be? Yes, and the concentration? Yes, one mole per decimeter cube. They can ask this for like one or two a mass. Ach, max. Okay, so they say there, you have iron and you have copper 2 plus and it goes to normal car, iron, ach, normal, blah, 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 blah. normal copper and you have iron that goes to iron 2 plus. So you're going to look for those two half reactions on table 4B. So you go to table 4B, we are looking for copper that goes to copper 2 plus, okay, so I'm going to get another paper for me. Are you highlighting already? Use a different color highlighter. Anything. Copper to copper 2 plus. And you must have iron to iron 2 plus there. Okay. You can see there the Z that it makes. So you go in that direction and that direction. Use other color highlighters or right, and they actually also tell you in the example they say you must go from iron to that side, and you must go from copper to plus to that side. We know the reaction at the top is it the oxidation or the reduction half reaction? Oxidation, and the bottom one is the reduction half reaction. Okay, so I'm going to go right there. I have the oxidation half reaction. Does that play, take place at the anode or the cathode? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. The oxidation half reaction, does it take place at the anode or the cathode? It takes place at the anode. Okay. And for that, I write... Now, I'm not going to use phase subscripts because they didn't ask. I must write the half reactions. I'm only doing this for myself. So, I'm not going to write the phase subscripts. The iron goes to iron 2 plus and 2 electrons. Now, if you look there on the right-hand side, what is the volts for iron to iron 2 plus? Negative 0 0.44. Okay. Then, the reduction of reaction takes place at the cathode. Okay, and if we look there, we see it goes from copper to plus, it gains two electrons, and it goes to copper. And the volts or the electric cell potential is? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You're looking at the wrong one. Two plus. Copper two plus. Okay, let's just help there. Um, Bees, there's a few coppers. You are busy with that one there. Okay, and it's the wrong one. Why is it the wrong one? Because it's going from 2 plus to plus. And it shouldn't. You are looking at that one. Okay, we almost never use that one. Are you with me? Okay. Um, all right, so that is 0 0.34. Then we must write the cell notation. So you're going to write E cell. Now I'm going to choose which formula to use. Now, you all know I'm very lazy. So I'm going to use the one that I have to write the less. And that one is where I write E cell of cathode minus E of anode. So you can write oxidizing agent, reducing agent, whatever. 
Okay, so at the cathode we have 0 0.34 minus, at the anode we have minus 0 0.44 and if you add that, to get that together, you get a volt of 0 0.78. So for that cell, that will be the volts that you get. Okay. Any questions there? Next one. They say that an electrochemical cell consists of aluminium and silver half cells. Determine the net cell reaction. Okay, so this is a long question. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to table 4B. And we are going to look for silver and aluminium. Ne? Yeah, aluminium and silver. So there I have aluminium. Plus three, yes? And silver is here all the way at the bottom. Okay. So we can make a Z there, like that. And I know that will go in that direction, and that will go in that direction. Okay, so we know that will go there, so that's the oxidation half reaction. That will go there, that is the reduction half reaction. So, I'm going to write here for myself. I have my oxidation half reaction that takes place at the anode, and I have my reduction half reaction that takes place at the cathode. And I'm going to go write them down. The oxidation was the aluminium solid. Remember the oxidation you read from right to left on your table. You check on the table if you agree with me. Hey? If you don't agree, you must speak up. And the reduction of reaction was silver. And while I'm busy writing that down, I see they will later on ask for the EMF, the volts of the cell. So I'm going to write that down. The first one is negative 1.66 and the other one is 0 0.80. Now they ask for the net cell reaction or the redox reaction. So that is where I must add these two together. Before I can add them together, what must I check for? Do they? Do they balance? Do the electrons balance? Do they balance currently? No. So I must multiply this one with three. Three, three, three. Now the electrons cancel out. So we have aluminium solid plus three silver ions aqueous gives you aluminium ion aqueous plus three silver solid. Okay, so that is my net cell reaction. That's the first question. Question A. Question B, they ask you to do or to calculate the EMF of the cell, the volts of the cell. So E of the cell is the E of the cathode minus the E of the anode. The cathode we saw was 0 0.80 minus, the anode is minus 1.66. And you get a volt of 2.46 volts. That is quite a good battery to have. What does it mean if the volt is negative? We're going to get to that. But it shouldn't be negative. Oh, your answer at the back, oh, at the end. Okay, now I just want to add a few more questions. The next question I want to add is please write the cell notation. 
So that is like the name of the cell, the cell notation. I'm going to add a few questions. Okay, so the cell notation, we said it's the anode, so aluminium solid that goes to aluminium 3 plus aqueous. Then we write our salt bridge. Then we have the thing at the cathode, the silver ion aqueous goes to silver solid. Now the next thing I want us to write down is please give me the name of the reducing agent. The name of the reducing agent. And E, I want the formula of the oxidizing agent. Okay. Where will we find the reducing agent? At, at the oxidation of reaction or reduction of reaction? Oxidation. So here at the oxidation of reaction, which one is our reducing agent? Aluminium solid. It's always, always the thing you start with. Okay? So there, the reducing agent is the aluminium. 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 Okay, and the formula of my oxidizing agent, I find that at my reduction half reaction. What is my um, oxidizing agent? It's always the thing I start with, the silver ion. So, Ag plus aqueous. So, there's a big difference between silver and silver ion. Aluminium and aluminium ion. Okay, and then my last question there is, when will the EMF become zero? When will the EMF become zero? Okay. So, to determine that, we must determine first the limiting reagent, the substance that will be used up first. Which one will be used up first? Silver or aluminium? Silver, because it's three to one. So, we need three silver. So, the silver will be used up first. Now, where will we use the silver? If you look inside your head, inside the picture, it's the aluminium that goes into solution. So, the aluminium rod... Is corroded away, it goes into the solution, right? Then on the other side is the silver ions that are in the solution, goes and they sit and they form a precipitate on the rod there. Okay, so we are looking there. Which one will be determining the determining factor? The silver of reaction. And where specifically? The silver ions that are in the solution that will need to form a silver precipitate. So if the solution is depleted, if there's nothing left in the solution, just water, nothing left in the solution to form a precipitate. Yes? Okay, so when will the EMF become zero? When the silver ions in solution is depleted. Deep. Deleted. Or in other words, when there's no more silver ions in solution. Okay. The next way, uh, the next thing that we're going to look at is to determine if a reaction will take place. Take place. Okay, so here we said, yes, the reaction does take place. What will the volts be? Now we're going to determine, but will a, uh, a reaction take place? Okay. Now the way we determine, we predict if a reaction will take place, is if the cell, the volts that we calculate, if it is positive, then the reaction will take place spontaneously. Then it will take place. If the volts that you calculate is negative, then the reaction will not take place. Then your battery will not work. 
Okay, Beast, did I answer your question there? When you calculate the volts and the volts is negative, then your battery won't work. It's like you plugged in the things incorrectly. It will not work. Okay. So they say there, will the following redox reaction be spontaneous? Will the redox reaction be spontaneous? And then they give you um, the, the half, two half reactions together there. So you go to table 4B. You need a new table 4B. So Nelly, what are you talking about? Huh? Yes, we have to calculate it again, I know. Okay, so we go from copper to copper 2 plus. Where's that one? There's copper to copper 2 plus, and we have zinc. Um, there's zinc. Okay, now we can't just say, okay, yes, we can make a Z. There we go. They are specific in here. They say you must go from copper to copper 2 plus. So they say this half reaction must go in that direction. So they say you have to start with copper and needs to go to copper 2 plus. And for the zinc, they say you must start with the zinc ions and go in that direction. So we start with the zinc ions and it goes in that direction. Okay. Now you can't say you're... Nope. A Z like that, it doesn't work because the arrows point to the inside. Ne, 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 ne. You have to prove with a calculation why it will not work. Yeah, I know. Okay, so they are saying, incorrectly, saying that this one is the oxidation half reaction. It starts with copper and goes that way. So they say the oxidation is here and the reduction is there. Which we know is wrong, but we have to prove that it's wrong. Okay, so we are going to go the oxidation half reaction at the anode is where we go from copper to copper 2 plus and it loses two electrons. And I'm looking there, I'm using this copper to copper 2 plus, so it lost two electrons. The reduction half reaction at the cathode is the zinc 2 plus. It Gains two electrons and it goes to zinc. Okay, you go to table 4B. For the first one, the volt or the uh, cell is 0 0.34. And this one, it is minus 0 0.76. Okay, so we're going to say the, sorry, the E cell is the E cathode minus the E anode. So we have 0 0.76 minus 0 0.34 and you get an answer of negative 1.1 volts. And then we can say that means no EMF. Ach, that means no because the EMF is equal to a negative. Now, this is what you're going to use when the ask, when the question is use calculations to prove that. It will not happen or it will not take place. If the ask explain, so explain his words, explain in words why or if the reaction will not take place, then you're going to look at the agents. The agents. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this page here. If we consider zinc and copper, then we can see zinc is the stronger reducing agent. This is where oxidation should take place. So it is the stronger reducing agent. Or 
the higher up you go, the more the uh, increase the inis ability to be a reducing agent. So because zinc is a stronger reducing agent than copper, zinc will rather be oxidized than copper. Thus, the reaction will not take place. So if you compare the two, if you compare zinc with copper, so then we're going to say there, zinc is a stronger reducing agent than copper. Thus, zinc would rather be oxidized. Thus, reaction will not take place. Okay, any questions there? Anything I need to repeat? I just want to do this here. I'm not going to lie, I want to finish. <laughs> okay, right, it says, will iron uh, filings, that's how I pronounce it, but it's like a little pieces of iron, little, it's almost, it looks like, um, uh, like if you take a raise and you go like this, that little hair, look, iron pieces like that. Okay. Will iron filings uh, react with dilute hydrochloric acid and form hydrogen gas? So they ask, will this reaction take place? Or if you add the iron to the hydrochloric acid, will it just, psh, both of them be there? Will the reaction take place or not? Okay, so we want to either prove that the um, cell is zero or we want to explain it in words. Okay. Now, I think if I write it like this, you guys will have no idea what to do. Okay, what? You start with writing a formula for yourself. Okay, so this is just for yourself. Iron, filings, little piece of iron, is just the iron solid. And they say that must react with hydrochloric acid, aqueous. The solution. So that will react with one another. And they'll say one of the products must be hydrogen gas. So we have hydrogen gas. So if you look at what we have here, we have deleted hydrogen gas. So what will we have, will we have left? Iron chloride. Okay, so we have left iron chloride. Now that compound like that does not exist. Okay, so we have to go back. Um, hydrogen's valency is plus one. Chlorine's valency is negative one. You had to study that last year. Sorry, here I want to put in a plus. Okay. Now, uh, iron's valency can be three things. It can be plus two, plus three, and I think your options are only plus two and plus three. Maybe it's plus one as well. No, you only have a plus two and a plus three. Okay, now which one to choose? In this example specifically, it will be plus two. But that's a difficult one because iron is normally plus three. So if it is something like that, then they must give you, they must tell you, listen, here it's plus two and not plus three. Okay, but I'm telling you this now because we're in class. So iron is plus two, chlorine is minus one. So is that formula correct? No, there needs to be a 2, then this reaction is not balanced, there needs to be a 2. Okay, so the two half reactions that we have here, because uh, you can see three elements, so ma'am, we must highlight three things in the periodic table. What is um, ion's valency there, or the oxidation number? There, but it's not bonded to anything. It is zero. So iron went from zero to two plus. So there is a change. So something happened to it. Hydrogen went from plus one. Here is hydrogen bonded to anything? No. It's bonded to itself but not anything else. So the valency there is zero. 
So hydrogen went from plus 1 to 0. So there was a change. Chlorine went from minus 1 to minus 1. So chlorine, nothing happened. Chlorine is the spectator ion. Spectator ion. Okay. So we are going to look for iron that goes to iron 2 plus on our table 4B. And we're going to look for hydrogen that went to hydrogen. Okay, so you go to table 4B. Yo, do I have space? Yes. Um, I need iron to iron 2 plus there. And I need hydrogen there. Okay. Now, before I put in my arrows, they told me iron must go in that direction. And according to my formula, hydrogen will go in that direction. So can I draw my Z like that? Yes, I can. So a reaction will take place. Okay, but now I have to go prove that it takes place. Anyone that's lost? Anyone something I'm going to say again? No one? Easy peasy. Too scared to say. Okay. So we have our oxidation half reaction at the anode. We have our reduction half reaction at the cathode. Okay. So at the anode, the one that's at the top of our Z, the oxidation is iron that went to iron 2 plus. And we had hydrogen there at the reduction of reaction. Actually, two hydrogens with two electrons. Is it two? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it goes to hydrogen gas. You can see the electrons cancel out. Okay. Oh, I actually don't have to write all of that down, but they do cancel out. So if I write the E, sorry, the E cell is the E of the cathode minus the E of the anode. So that is, oh, I didn't write down the, the volts. Uh, hydrogen is zero and iron is minus 0 0.44. So zero minus minus 0 0.44. So we have 0 0.44 volts, so yes, the reaction will take place. Okay, if you had explained it in words, then you could have said, because iron is higher up, you will say iron is a stronger reducing agent then hydrogen thus it will be oxidized okay i'm just gonna say something that i think might be a question in your head ma'am why are you comparing iron with hydrogen gas and not iron with hydrogen ion. I'm comparing the things on the right hand side with each other. Okay, so I'm saying iron is a stronger reducing agent than hydrogen. Because the thing on the right hand side is the reducing agent. Okay. Right. So it says at the bottom, the EMA versus current versus cell notation. Most of the reactions are reversible to an extent. So it means you can go back and forth and back and forth. There's a bit of play. We said the EMF, the volt, depends on the concentration, the temperature, um, and also the pressure, but not so much. We don't look at that that much. What must the concentration be? One. And the temperature? 25, okay, you guys still have a bit of energy in you. Okay, then, important. As the reaction proceeds, as it goes on, as it continues, the concentration of the reagent decreases 
and the products increases. You use up your reagents and you get more products. And then because it is being used up, because it's being depleted, that causes the rate of the forward reaction to decrease. It goes slower and slower and slower. And what does that lead to? It leads to, it lowers the cell's ability to cause electrons to flow. So because the, the rate decreases, the electrons move slower, 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 and that is why the EMF decreases, the volts decrease. So after a while, your volt will not be 2.44, it will go to zero. Then the EMF eventually reaches zero, and that is where the reaction reaches equilibrium. All right. Do you have your exam book? Oh, sorry, no, one more page. Now, there are two real-life examples of batteries that are made with this principle. Now, obviously, this idea is a very simplified sketch. We have more interesting batteries. Now, the first one that we... Oh, we're going to do two types of batteries. Primary batteries and secondary batteries. You just need to know primary batteries cannot be recharged. When it's finished, you throw them away. And secondary batteries are rechargeable batteries. Okay, right. Now... Yeah, I have. Oh, well, there in the picture you can see the battery or example of a battery that um, you've seen in your life before. Yeah, a Duracell battery or whatever. Now, it's on this principle. It's built on this principle. So, here you can see I have a, just an example. So, we have the electrode in the middle. So, that round thing is the electrode that's in the middle. Then you have something that is... Um, it, it stops it. But it can get things through. It's a porous thing. Okay? Like a cell, a membrane, and then you have another electrode on the outside. Okay. So that is the same idea. So it doesn't have to be round, up a square like this with the salt bridge and the blah 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 blah. Can make different shapes and sizes and then we change a few of the things. Now you don't need to know all of these equations here on the right hand side. What is going on we? What they can do is they can give you the half reactions and then you must say which one is the oxidation half reaction. Okay, so they can, for example, give you these two uh, reactions and then ask which one is the oxidation half reaction. You just need to know oxidation, it loses electrons. So which one loses electrons? Um, the first one gives away electrons. The second one takes electrons. Can you see that? Okay, so you must be able to identify that. Just see, okay, that is the oxidation half reaction because it loses electrons. And this one, because it gains electrons, it is the reduction half reaction. You also need to know that it is a primary battery and that it cannot be recharged. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. It's actually quite interesting, but we don't have a lot of time. Then the next one is secondary batteries that's rechargeable. Now this is like a battery that you find in your car. Car battery, something like that. So a big battery or that you have a generators or so forth. Okay, so we call it a lead acid cell. So here you just need to know... Uh, oh, again, you need to be able to identify which one is the oxidation, which one is the reduction half reaction. So if you look at these half reactions there, you can see that this one gives away electrons, so it's the oxidation half reaction. This one gets electrons, so it's the reduction half reaction. Okay, and then here you need to know that the electrolyte is sulfuric acid or diluted sulfuric acid. Okay, I just want to check something quickly. But while I'm checking that, I want you to open. Do you have your exam booklets here? I will. I did. I said yesterday, didn't I tell you to bring a booklet? I said, no, ma'am. Then what do you think? You don't have to bring it the next class. Okay, so you have to bring it on Thursday. Ne? We're not done yet since you didn't bring it. Never mind. What do I want? 
Um, I just quickly want to check that I didn't skip anything there. Okay, so they say what you must know. You must define the galvanic cell. You must state the function of the salt bridge. What's the function of the salt bridge? To complete the circuit. Right? Predict the movement we can do. Right? Half cell reactions. Predict um, where, where will oxidation reaction take place. You must write the cell notation. You must calculate the EMF. You must explain when a battery will go off or when it will go flat. And state the standard conditions. Can you do all of that? What's the second purpose? Okay, to help with the movement of that. Did I say that? Um, okay, just hold on to that for a moment. Um, will you be able to explain the standard hydrogen electrode? That hydrogen one that we looked at? Oh, yeah. Yes. And then you must explain. Okay, you must just explain or be able to say, will this reaction take place? Calculate the positive or the negative. Okay, so the um, salt reach, yes, I said here. Uh, where did I say that? Here. I said that this must be a soluble salt so that it can help with these two, sorry, not these two, these two completing the, the um, circuit there. Okay? Completing and help with completing. Okay, right, so that is all that you must be able to do that. Now, I wanted to do some two exam questions, but since you don't have this here, please bring it on Thursday. I'm going to go on with the work, Okay. We have 25 minutes. We can really get a lot done. Maybe we can finish it. Are you guys still here? Okay. The next type of cell. So these are two different questions in the exam. We did now one question. And then you have another question. The last question is on electrolytic cells. Okay, I need another highlighter. Electrolytic cells. So the previous one it was electrochemical cells or galvanic cells. Now we have electrolytic cell. Now what is the electrolytic cell? It's the opposite. The galvanic cell, we started with chemicals, we made electricity. Now with the electrolytic cell, we start with electricity and we make chemicals. Okay, so it is a cell in which electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. Where electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. Now it says here this reaction isn't spontaneous, meaning it's endothermic and you need to add an electrical current. Otherwise it will not take place. You need to add an electrical current. Okay, so here you can see it looks very similar, but this time you don't have two separate containers. You have one container. Okay, so it's like here. Okay, so like here you can see I have two electrons in here. The one is copper, the other one is probably zinc. Okay, and I will put it in one container with one liquid. Okay, you can see there's two places where I'll add electricity to it. Okay, so you start with electricity and then something will happen there around the electrons. Now here, and again, galvanic cells, the anode was positive or negative? Negative and node negative where oxidation takes place. Now here, the anode is positive, but oxidation still takes place there. Okay, so it's just a positive and the negative that is swapped around. Okay, um, right. So as you can see there, I have my two electrodes inside my solution. What do we call the solution here that can conduct electricity? There's a specific name for a solution. It starts with an E. It's on your notes in front of you. <laughs> electrolyte. Electrolyte. So here you can see we have, and I'm going to start with the electrolyte. It is the substance that is 
that dissolves in water to give a solution that can conduct electricity. So the electrolyte is the liquid in here. The liquid is the electrolyte where you have ions. So if we say it's copper chloride, the electrolyte, it actually, we need to say aqueous. And that means you have copper ions and you have two chloride ions. So if we say it's an electrolyte, it actually means that you have a lot of ions that can conduct electricity, that can move around. Okay? Now this process um, is called electrolysis. Electrolysis. So an electrolytic cell undergoes electrolysis. What is electrolysis? It's a chemical process in which electrical energy is converted to chemical energy or the use of electricity to produce chemical change. The use of electricity to produce chemical change or to produce chemicals. Okay. Now, in there we also have electrodes. Okay, so some, uh, the substance that makes contact between the external circuit and the electrolyte, the solution. Okay, now here I just said again, the anode is where oxidation will take place. The cathode is where reduction will take place. But here, just be careful, the anode is positive and the cathode is negative. Okay. Now, I just want to quickly go here. As you can see, we start with electricity. We start with a battery. So if you see there's a battery there, then you must think electrolytic cell. If you see a salt bridge, you must think galvanic cell. Okay. Now, what will happen here is let's say we have in here um, copper chloride. So it means we have copper ions and we have chlorine ions. That's what it means. Okay, now if I put a battery there, this is the positive side, then it means this whole thing becomes, becomes, becomes positively charged because it's attached to the positive side of the battery. Because the other one is attached to the negative side of the battery, this whole thing becomes negatively charged. Now, what do we know about positive and negative? They attract. So here, this will be attracted to the negative and you will see a copper layer form. So there is a copper layer that forms. On the other side, we have chlorine that is negative that will be attracted to the positive electrode. Do we get something like a chlorine layer? No. What will happen if chlorine gets, uh, gives away its electrons? If it, does, if it goes from chlorine to negative to normal? I feel the same. It will form chlorine bubbles, gas bubbles. So if you put your nose next to it, you'll smell chlorine gas. So there, oh, you know, chlorine gas forms the chlorine gas forms okay but we're going to do an example like that on the next page okay so for this one it's not necessary to go to table 4b galvanic cells you go to table 4b this one it can help you sometimes but you'll see it's way easier than galvanic cells okay right so we have different uses for these electrolytic cells. So we are going to do one, two, three, four, five uses. Now, these five examples, they can uh, give you any one of these five examples in the exam, in the test exam. Sometimes they'll, instead of saying, they say instead of using um, here copper chloride, they can use silver chloride. But the idea, the picture, the thing that you must do remains the same. Okay, and there's some of them that I'm going to say they're going to use exactly this one. If they ask it like this, it's going to be exactly like this. Okay, 
So the first use for an electrolytic cell is decomp. Please pronounce it D. Decomposing. Thank you. Decomposing so means taking apart. All right. So that's the first use for it. So this is a type of reaction in which a single compound, a single compound breaks down into two or more elements or new compounds. Okay, right, and here they say we are going to use, for example, copper chloride, like we just had. So in here, you can see we're going to have copper chloride, but that just means we are going to have copper ions and we are going to have chlorine ions in the solution. And what we want to do when we decompose it is we want to split this up into copper and to chlorine. Not ions, but copper, solid copper, and chlorine. Not the ions. Okay. So what we do is we put the two electrodes. Now normally in this reaction, they use carbon electrodes. Like this, pieces of charcoal, carbon electrodes, and they put it in the solution. Okay. So put that in there. They run electricity through it. And we know this whole one will become positively charged. And this thing will become negatively charged. And what do we know about positive and negative? They attract. So the copper will be attracted to the negative electrode where it will form a precipitate, where it will form this layer around it. And the chlorine will be attracted to the positive electrode where you will see the gas bubbles, the chlorine bubbles given off. Okay, not too difficult. Now you must just be able to do the theory. The anode, is that where oxidation or reduction takes place? Oxidation. The cathode? Reduction. Okay. Now what is the half reaction at the oxidation? Okay. So we say at the anode is oxidation. Is the anode in this one positive or negative? Positive, this one's negative. So here at the positive electrode, what happened? What changed into what? We started with a chlorine ion and it went to form chlorine gas. Now, you get into the exam. This is your last question in the exam. You have written three hours more or less. You are finished. Hard. Okay, so you can use table 4B to help you. Here, you're not going to look at the Z. Does it work out or not? not gonna, you're just going to help you, help you with the half reactions. Okay? So if you go to table 4B, you look for chlorine. Chlorine is, I think, almost at the bottom. Fifth from the bottom. Okay, there you see the chlorine half reaction. Okay, just want to go there. There is your chlorine half reaction. Now, we don't necessarily go from left to right. You must think, what did we start with here? We started with the chlorine and then it formed the chlorine gas. So you're going to write it in reverse. Okay? So we started with the chlorine ions. Aqueous. And in that half reaction, there's a 2 in front of it. And then it went to chlorine gas. So it gave away 2 electrons. Okay, at the cathode, we started with the copper ions and then we went to copper. It formed a copper layer. So we started with the copper 2 plus ions and it then went to copper solid, the copper layer. So it should have gained two electrons. It should have gained two electrons. Okay, now the observations here can be quite elaborate, okay? So what do we observe at the anode? So this one is the anode, this one was the cathode. What do we observe? We observe that chlorine gas is given off. Okay, so that's the observation. Observation is what you see, or what you can smell, or what you can hear. That's what you observe.
okay? If they ask what takes place at the anode, then you will say what takes place at the anode is chlorine is oxidized to chlorine gas. Okay, so if you had to explain, then you'll have to say at the anode, chlorine aqueous uh, is oxidized to chlorine gas. That is an expl explanation, if you have to explain. But what you observe is what you see, what you smell, what you hear. What do you observe at the cathode? You see copper metal is deposited, or you see a copper layer is formed around it. Okay, and if you have to explain, then you'll say copper ion is reduced to copper. Okay, okay next one. The next use, and I think you've, you've heard about this use before, is electroplating. You've heard about that? You say, oh, I have such nice gold earrings, and then your gold earrings are electroplated. Or you have fancy um, utensils at home, and then it, after a while it comes off, and you say, oh, this was not gold or silver, it was actually something else. Or what we also use electroplating for is to protect stuff. So we will electroplate like um, car rims, to protect it, to make it harder, to make it more durable. Or you'll electroplate keys or stuff like that so that it doesn't wear and tear that much or that fast. Okay, right. Now, what is electroplating? It is the process where a layer of metal is deposited, is formed on a metallic or a non-metallic, it doesn't matter, electrode by electrolysis in an electrolytic cell. On an electrode by electrolysis in an electrolytic cell. Okay, so the example that we have here is copper in copper nitrate. So if you look at this picture here, you can see here we have a key and we want to plate that key. We want to protect that key. Okay, so we have here impure copper. It doesn't need to be Im impure copper. It can be normal copper as well. Now the solution here must also have copper in it. Okay, so the solution, the electrolyte, that's in there, must also have copper in it. And you can see the electrolyte I chose is copper nitrate. Okay, so if we go from copper and we want to electroplate it here, it must be in a solution of electro nit uh, copper nitrate or copper whatever. So we basically have the copper ion and we have the nitrate ion. Okay. This is the last one I'm going to do, and then we're going to go on, on Thursday. Here you see is the cell or the battery. You can see here is the positive side. Here's the negative side. So because of that, obviously, when the switch is closed, this whole side becomes positively charged. This whole side becomes negatively charged. The positive one is at the anode or the cathode? Anode. Is that where oxidation or reduction takes place? Oxidation takes place. This here is the cathode, and this is where reduction takes place. Okay, right. Now, these half reactions, so anode is oxidation, reduction, the cathode. These half reactions will be quite tricky, but it's not tricky at all. It's just a, a mind thing. At the anode, we want this copper to dissolve into the solution and then go sit on there. So we first want this copper to dissolve, okay, so that it can go sit on there. So at the anode, we want the copper solid to go into copper solution, and we'll give off electrons as well. And then at the cathode, on the other side, we want the copper ions to go and become copper solid so it's the same reaction okay it's just the reverse on the one we wanted to go into the solution and on the other side we wanted to form a precipitate so it's the same reaction just in reverse okay then what do you observe what do you see smell here at the key side you see the um, not the key the anode will be eaten 
or eroded away. And what do you observe at the key side? A layer of copper forms around the key. Okay, so on Thursday we will go on with this, we will finish it, and we will do exam questions on it. Okay.